Welcome to a special presentation of Sellout Crowd, Conversations with Coach. I'm Bob Stoops. I'm taking time to talk with my friends and colleagues in the sports world to get caught up and share some stories. Today, I'm joined by OU's great women's basketball coach, Jenny Baranchek. Welcome, Jenny. You're really kind to join me today on, on my podcast or for Sellout Crowd. Want to want to congratulate you right up front, the Big 12 Coach of the Year, uh, back-to-back Big 12 champs. Really excited and happy for you. Talk Just just talk about uh, the year real quick. I, I want to get into your background first, you know, okay. but, but I want to congratulate you and welcome you. Well, you're the best, and I just appreciate you even having me. So even, even being on your show is a big deal from my standpoint. So I've known... <laughs> I've known you for a long time. I know we haven't necessarily known each other, but I've known a lot about you. So, but yeah, no, this year it's been so much fun. It's been, you know, and fun is a loose term, right? Because you have growth right. and you have challenge, and it's easy to it's easy now to say it's been fun, but it's just it's been a it's been a really interesting year, but a great team to coach. It's been a it's been one of those years where you get a group of people together and we've become a team, and that's and you know as well as anybody when you're in it. Uh, it's pretty cool to be able to watch that really grow and develop. Yeah, and and you got some award winners. I know Skylar Vance, <laughs> right? Is was the uh, unanimous unanimous first team All Big Twelve mm-hmm. and the uh, uh, co Big Twelve Player of the Year. Talk about her play through the year. Well, she's one of those players to even go back even just throughout this year. Uh, prior to this year, she was a player that didn't even sign early and didn't have an opportunity. So you don't see this happen. You don't see somebody who has a dream to come to Oklahoma. You know, obviously her father was a great basketball player here. And so she's grown up, you know, she's grown up as a Sooner and she's really been able to play it out. And then this year, you've been able to watch her the last couple of years. She was the sixth player of the year. And so there's drama in that and there's, you know, you come in and this is what you do. And she's kind of grown through that to then have to grow into not just a starting position for us, but a leadership and a steady position for us. Right. So you've been able to see her do that throughout this year. And so for, for a COVID big 12 player of the year honor to be able to kind of find her has been pretty cool, especially with the growth that we've been able to see on a daily basis with her throughout the season. And, yeah, it, absolutely. And then, then the newcomer of the year, Peyton Verholz. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I hope I pronounced that properly. Mm-hmm. But, but uh, the newcomer of the year that that's really pretty special as well. Well, and Peyton is special, and I think you know we've been able to watch Peyton grow a lot as well. And so, for her to have the impact that she's had on this team too, has been incredible. I mean, she's such a talented player. I think what makes her so great is she's. She's a taller player. You know, she's probably like six one ish that thinks like a point guard. And so she has that mindset of making sure everybody gets involved. I think she's been a huge catalyst for us, uh, really, in terms of how we've been able to get this championship. You know, you replaced four starters from a year ago. Talk about that process and how this team came together, you know, just in in that, that short of time to play to the level they've played at so far. Well, it's painful. It's a painful process, Bob, <laughs> as you know. Um, but no, I mean, but it's also been, you know, it's been really good. I mean, I think one of the things that's been really unique about this season is obviously our non-conference was tough. We started out in those first few games and it was really good. And then we lost a lot of games. Um, well, in, in you know, the start of the year, you were picked like fifth in the conference. We were picked fifth in the conference, and that was before um, we knew that one of our uh, Liz Scott was not going to be able to play this season. So she was injured in November after that came out. So at that time, we had two returning starters. We're picked fifth. Um, we're feeling pretty good. And honestly, this was one of those where then we kind of started losing some games, and that got really rough for us. And you know, and obviously, our December was a really big struggle. But it was end of November too. And here's the thing that I think that sometimes we don't do at one as coaches, but definitely the outside looking in, we don't always get to celebrate the progress and the process as much. And, you know, for example, offensively, you know, we didn't shoot the ball very well, but we were getting the right ideas and we were getting the right looks and we were doing some of those right things. So, 
from that standpoint, it's hard because you're not feeling the fruits of your labor at all. Right. And so you've got to continue to stay the course. You've got to continue to focus on getting better. Our problem wasn't that we didn't have talent. Our problem was just that we wanted it so bad that you know how that can get. You want something so bad sometimes and you don't allow it just to flow. And right. I think that really set us, you know, I think, I think us staying the course uh, propelled us to a championship. Now, we also scheduled in a really hard way. And that's just a personal philosophy because I want to test us. I wanted to know who we were because I knew we graduated a lot the year before. But I also probably overscheduled us that we were a little bit like, okay, every game's hard. But we knew every game was going to be hard in the Big 12. So I, I thought, okay, I'm going to know him by the end of November. And I don't, and I don't think we did. And then I thought, okay, well, we'll know him at the end of December. And at the end of December, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> where are we? And then, you know, you come back after Christmas, you come back as refreshed as you can, you come back as hungry as you can, and then you just inch your way. And it's been, it's been fun to watch this team be so, ah, we're worried, you right. know, we're a little bit tight to, okay, what's the worst that can happen? Right. So let's just play and let's make sure that we're representing Oklahoma. Let, uh, let me guess. There are some of those times after you've lost a few. This is me in the parking lot before I walk into my staff, before I see my team. You give yourself a little talking to to project confidence, mm -hmm. to trust the process. Look, <laughs> this happened yeah. the other day on me. Well, that's <laughs> awesome. I know. I, I think it's a message my, from my God. You're right. Out. Yes. I'm, I'm down yes. here in Choctaw Stadium, but uh, my lights went out. But point being, you 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 give yourself a talking to 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 project the confidence in your process mm -hmm. and what you're doing to your coaches, mm -hmm. as well as then when you're in front of your team, you've got to project the confidence to trust what we're doing and believe it's going to work. So you you had to have yeah. a talking to to yourself, right? Oh, a million. I mean, you pray <laughs> a lot. Your faith grows, yeah. right? You're, because you sit there and you and you think about because when this is this is as coaches as you know like this isn't just what we do this is literally who we are this is part right. of our DNA and and then you have a family at home too right and so there's so much in that and then you feel so responsible for everyone else's family on your staff let alone your players and so you do you go through that where you have to get such true conviction through your faith that you've got to roll up your sleeves and you're doing it with them. So yeah. it's not a, it's not a, here's the speech. Here's what you guys are going to do. It's okay. Here we go. We're all in this. <laughs> That's we're right. all going to give everything that we have and we're going to keep going. So what you're telling them and what you're telling yourself in those times are, are those details, those inches that you got to do too. So right. you got to sleep, you got to sleep. You got to hydrate, you better hydrate. You got to show up every day with a smile on your face. You got to show up every day with a smile on your face to be able to keep moving forward. So, yeah, plenty of talks. Plenty yeah. of talks. <laughs> well, I had those, you know, football with only 12 games. You know, you yeah. lose one or two and it's it's the end of the world. So, right. you know, I, there were one, one year I remember uh, late in my career, we lost our first game at Houston. And and I I had a I had a sit in my car for for about twenty minutes before I walked in on that Sunday to see my staff and what we were going to do, and mm -hmm. and there's there's a lot of soul searching and or you know what I've got to project this confidence in what we're doing, and I believe I want to say we ended up making the playoffs at the end of the year, uh, you know after that. So um, I've I've been in that I've been in your shoes with that. That's that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Let's talk mm -hmm. about you brought up your family. Talk about your 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 husband and children uh, mm -hmm. and 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 how they're doing and adjusting your third year here at OU. You know, it's been crazy that it's already been three years. So uh no, I mean I have the I have the best husband. I, Scott's just I mean, he's been just incredible for us to do this. So this is these honors, these awards, this championship is as much his and our families as it is all of our families but he makes us go and um you know he's an entrepreneur so he's a small business owner too so he understands that element of having to show up every day and 
you know, you got to do all those small things. So he works really hard. And ironically, his busy time is January, which is really helpful in our family because that's all of our busy (laughs) times. So we're lucky for our our extended family. A lot of times my parents come down and fill in. And so they still live in Iowa. They're still in Des Moines, but they sometimes come down here too. So they've been really great. And then our kids are adjusting. And I think, you know, we have an 11 year old, a nine year old and a six year old. So we're fifth grade, fourth grade and kindergarten. Oh, Um, wow. And I know. Wow. It's right. So (laughs) this morning, I mean, we didn't even have shoes on in the car as I'm trying to get them out. Right. So it's, um, you know, I'll tell you this, our first game this year and, you know, we win at Ole Miss and that's a big win. They were ranked in the top 15. This is our first, you know, coming out, whatever. And my middle daughter, Jordy, who was the one that went viral and she, um, that was so uh, awesome. (laughs) She was so nervous yeah. about the game and she was yeah. sick the whole week and all this stuff. I mean, you know how your kids carry it. Yeah. And so after the game, I'm like, okay, uh, one of our coaches is like, you need to FaceTime her. You need to FaceTime home because we just won. So I, we're so excited. We're all, this is awesome. I come out of the locker room. We're super excited. I call home and she's crying. The other ones are crying. They're all fighting. They're all in your like, all right, right, right back to mom there, <laughs> you know? That's funny. So, yeah, I mean, so they just keep you really humble. Um, but they're, you know, they're they're really awesome too. They they do. They keep you humble. They get to you still get to be mom, even though that's really hard sometimes to be coach and sure. mom. Um, but they're they they just they're just awesome. There's nothing better than being a parent. Yeah, you're an Urbandale, Iowa girl, mm-hmm. Dowling Catholic High School, West Des Moines. Mm-hmm. You know, for, for I married an Iowa girl from Cresco, Iowa, my, mm-hmm. my wife, Carol. So there's something special about these Iowa girls. They're, they know how to win or help me win. She helped me win a bunch. But right. uh, then we're fellow Hawkeyes. Go Hawks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You and I played at the University of Iowa. You were a forward. 2003, first team all Big Ten, right? Mm-hmm. The year you graduated, you're, you're the Medal of Honor winner in the Big Ten. Uh, for academic and athletic excellence, talk about your playing career and and what what were some of the better best parts of being a player at Iowa? Well, I think you know one I when I grew up there, right, and so I got to live out a dream, and I think that's what we want young people to be able to do is go and you know that's why we recruit this state so hard because there's a, something that's a little different. I think with the Iowa background too, and it's not all Iowa people, but it's very similar in an Oklahoma sense of, you know, you're, you're very blue collar. Humility is always going to be a a virtue that you hold very dear to you. um, And you just want to work. And so you're not afraid of that. And so when you work like that and you're blue collar like that, you can fall down, you can get up. It's not about you. It's about the team. So I love where I was able to grow up. Um, and there's also a, a major sense of community and pride. And there is in, in being from there, there is obviously, you know, as, as being, you know, an alum of, of the university, um, there's still an immense pride of what you got to do. And so I gave everything I had to that team, to that program, to that state. And I feel like um, I was able to do a lot better than I was, quote unquote, supposed to. You know, my freshman year, we had the biggest turnaround in NCAA history. We then became a team that went to the tournament every year. Um, we won the Big Ten. So it was it, it was really – it was just an awesome experience. And I got to play for Lisa Bluter, who's there now. Uh, and I was there her first year. So I had a coaching change between my senior year and my freshman year. You know, in that time, there was no – there was not – the portal didn't exist. Like, you didn't even – Right. You rarely thought about ever transferring. Um, you just knew it was hard, you know, and, and there it, it, wrestling was at an all time high when I was there. Always. And so we watched <laughs> them, you know, how much they worked. And then all of a sudden our coaches, you go up and down those, you know, those stairs with people on your back. And we did that and we just worked. you know, now I would get in so much trouble for the things that we did, as you know, yeah. um, But it was it was really it was a really cool experience. And I will say that I got to, you know, a lot of people get into coaching for a variety of reasons. And the reason I got to go into it is because I love the game. And I was so lucky to have Hall of Fame high school coaches. I was lucky to have my dad coach. 
And I was lucky to have an incredible college coach and have loved this experience. And so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. You, you know what? My position coach, uh, Bill Brazier, with, uh, worked with Hayden Fry forever. Mm -hmm. He said, if, if you can do without coaching, do without it. Mm -hmm. And People Everyone like you talks you out of it. Everybody <laughs> tries to talk. And quite honestly, you kind of talk other people out of it, too, because you're like, you got to know well, what you're getting into. Yeah. And uh, let me ask you, what are what are maybe some philosophies of Lisa Coach Bluter that you, mm -hmm. you know, that you kind of have carried with you? Well, I think a big one is autonomy. And I don't even know if she would word it that way, but. You know, even my freshman year, I had a voice and I was able to talk in a timeout and I was able to, you know, be who I was in terms of that leadership. And she allowed that and and she tried to help you channel it, you know, because at, at 20, I wasn't probably the most mature leader of all times. <laughs> right. Um, but it was I, I loved that. And then it translated onto the floor, I think, from an offensive playing standpoint. You know, she she made us understand the game. She made us make the reads. It wasn't about her. It was about the players making the reads. And I loved that. And I've definitely carried that over. And then I think the humility piece, I think Lisa is one of the best coaches in the country. Um, but she just loves to coach. She doesn't care about the rest of it. She just loves that. And so um, that's that's how I want to be. I don't ever want it to be something that's, more than what the players are doing. Agreed. Uh, let me ask you now, you started out at Kansas State for several years as an assistant coach. Mm -hmm. That's one of my first full-time mm -hmm. assistant coaches with Bill mm -hmm. Snyder. Did you ever Did you ever go down to the Rockabelly? Rockabelly uh, Deli <laughs> down in Of Aggieville. course, that's like a staple. <laughs> I know down in Aggieville. I know, well, yes, exactly, exactly. I mean, you really weren't supposed to be around Aggieville, but yeah, for lunch, it's fine, right? Yeah, don't um, worry. I, w I went down yeah. in the evening, too. You know me. Oh, good. Of course you did. Of course you did. Uh, I'm sure they still remember you down there, don't they? Oh, well, yeah. I still have friends there, no doubt. But then yeah. you're Marquette, and then mm -hmm. you become the head coach at Drake, and you were at Drake nine years. And, well, and really, yeah. really turned them around. You, you had a 22-game win streak. The only time they've ever had a conference champion go undefeated. I'm trying to remember what year that was. Well, you know, the years kind of get together, so we should yeah. probably should have probably know that as well. But no, it was it was it was it was cool. I so I was at Kansas State a couple of years, and I and I was there for um, Coach Snyder's first retirement. Okay, and then obviously came back after, and then I was able to go to Marquette in, when we were in the Big East Conference, and then I actually was at Colorado for two years, the last oh. year of the Big Twelve and okay. the first year of the Pac twelve. So it was a really interesting time, and then became the head coach at Drake. And when I became the head coach at Drake, I was two weeks from my due date with my first child. Oh wow! <laughs> so you know how you know how it is when you're like. Uh, when you, before you become a parent, you're like an expert at what parenting should be, you know, especially in yeah. coaching, right? Cause we're like, yeah. Oh, you know, <laughs> especially the ones where you're like, Oh man, you don't want their parents there cause they don't play as well. Right. When then now you're that parent. Right. Right. Um, exactly. And so you had that and then you know how you were such a better head coach before you became one, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so it all just happened at once. So, and then, so we were there for nine years, but I will tell you, it was really some from Des Moines, and Drake's in Des Moines. And right. it was really cool to have that be the first opportunity because again, the community, my parents were there. My kids right. got to grow up with their cousins. Like that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And so it took a lot to leave there too. But, uh, you know, when we started, I think we won like five games. And then as the years went on, we had a couple of seasons that we were undefeated in conference and had those streaks and went to the NCAA tournament. Um, and then obviously, you know, this, this opportunity came up here, but I loved the nine years I got to spend there to really know who I am. I got to know what's really important. I got to be part of a community that supported you through good things, through not good things. Uh, and I think it really prepared me as a leader too, because you know, as well as anybody, the, the leadership it's, you know, it, it can look a variety of ways, but you always have to be true to who you are 
or it's right. not going to, it's not going to work. You can't become somebody else. You can't do it the way that somebody else does it because you'll fall down and kids are smart. Those young people oh, yeah. are smart and they're getting smarter and smarter <laughs> and they can see right through things. Yeah. You cannot fool a locker room. I've, I've said mm -hmm. that to, to people forever. And, and uh, any of my assistant coaches, I've had many fortunately that have gone on to be mm -hmm. head coaches. You've got to be yourself and you have to do it your own way. And uh, you can't copy somebody. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, 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 Jenny, we're we're incredibly excited at, at Oklahoma to have you in your third season, back to back Big 12 championships and, you know, more to come. And uh, just uh, really appreciate you joining me and sharing sharing some of your story with uh, with our sellout crowd, you know, uh, people that are watching and uh, wish you the best of luck here coming in the Big 12 tournament coming this weekend, I think. It is. Yep. And, and, yeah, we and, leave already tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> right. And then the NCAA tournament after that. So we'll be following you and wishing you the best of luck. Well, you are the absolute best. And I so much gratitude in allowing me to join you today. So I appreciate you. And Boomer, as always. Yeah, Boomer Sooner. That wraps up this installment of Conversations with Coach. Follow and subscribe to this channel and visit selloutcrowd.com to find out about upcoming programs.